Excelsior! All right, everybody, we're nearing the end of our look at the 1990 Marvel trading card set. We are now in the team pictures phase, <laughs> which is the most meta and world-breaking of them all. But again, this is a look at this trading card set that introduced most of us here mm. to the idea of the Marvel Universe. Um, we've looked at heroes, villains, famous battles, mm -hmm. famous first issues, uh, everything in between. But this time it is just the teams that were around and popular or mm -hmm. rising stars in the year 1990. Some of these you'll recognize from years past, and some of these you'll be like, that's a team. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, let's get right into it with uh, the, the first team, <gasps> for, in a sense, is Fantastic Four. The first family one. of the Marvel Universe. Dude, Reed Richards has never looked more badass, and I mean that for real. <laughs> he is Jack. His Look. lips are so tiny. Mm. Yeah, they're tiny lips. And meanwhile, uh, quite a jaw on Sue there. I, I'm <laughs> yeah. not a fan of her 80s or big 80s hair either. Also, Reed's doing the whole like upset, like obset, obsessive boyfriend at the mall. Yeah. Kind of, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Stay in front of me. A classic Sears photo shoot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're really posing for the camera. A lot of these you'll see this session of uh, mm -hmm. this episode is very... Everybody look over here. It's oh, like okay. a Kmart photo pose. It really and, is. But that's like Clint Eastwood eyes there. Yeah. yeah. I honestly am not a fan of this art on this other than thing. I think the guy, I so can't small. place the artist, but the yeah, the thing should be a little bigger they show than us that. the artist? I guess they don't. No, in the not in the this card. set. No. no. And, uh, but yeah, that's... That's, what, that's where I learned it. The Fantastic Four is the only superhero team whose members' true identities are known to the public pre-MCU. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now and, that's way less the case. Mm -hmm. but uh, And famously, formerly known as the Baxter Building, at that time known as the Four Freedoms Plaza, though now back to the name of the Baxter Building. Yeah. That is their base. I love that when they picture the base on it, mm -hmm. and that's the perfect base, too. Yeah. Like, I love the four on it, the giant four, and it's, it's always part of the Marvel New York skyline. Yeah. I mean, I Just love this seeing. idea that there's this team of people with like the smartest human on the planet mm -hmm. and one of the strongest physical beings in mm -hmm. the thing like and it's just part of the skyline and it's just always there it's mm -hmm. it's a very cool marvel universe icon oh. uh it's interesting on this though they don't even mention uh their real names it's mr fantastic oh, really? thing invisible woman human torch mm -hmm. i think now they would call them reed richards sue storm uh, mm. johnny storm and i would hate mm -hmm. to work on that top built the top floor of the the baxter building because that Tetris shape? I don't <laughs> want to work there. <laughs> no windows. <laughs> That's um, a missed opportunity for a Marvel Marilyn right there. Yeah. And, and this uh, building has been blown up a couple times. In mm. about five years from this card, it will be blown up by the Thunderbolts. Mm. And the current mm. owner of it is Peter Parker Industries. Jesus. Because the yeah. uh, half of the Fantastic Four is thoughts dead. While really, they're out in outer space <laughs> making <laughs> universes. Yeah. Don't think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next up in our look at the teams who, who? of the day is hey. the... Uh, you all recognize this lineup. Wow. wow. Uh, so well. we, we keep saying throughout this set that the Avengers were pretty cold at this point oh, yeah. in time. And, I mean, look at this team. It's like, yeah, you people know Vision maybe now more than they did then. But like <laughs> his Data the, East outfit. Yeah, but like Quasar and, and I mean, I love She-Hulk, but like that lineup is not... Like and Circe is that who, who, the, is? Yeah. who the fuck I is Circe? That, yeah, that is Circe. Well, there's uh, she's a mystical being, but she's a good one yeah. from outer space who who helps the team. She's basically their Scarlet Witch at the time. Yeah, she mm. has like weird manipulative energy powers. Yeah. She, but she didn't even get her own card, unlike almost yeah. everybody else. No, she did not, even no. with that sexy didn't. outfit. Uh, oh, the thing I love in the lineup though is mm. that well, I'll go back. Uh, is that Shulk is her mm. real size? Like yeah. she should tower no. over everybody else yeah. on there. She's not standing on an apple box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A milk crate. No, that's that's her real size. And yeah, to explain the outfits there, that uh, Vision had been replaced in a new robot body after mm -hmm. his classic red, yellow, green outfit had been destroyed. So this yeah. would later be proven to be built by, I believe it was Kang who used it oh, to uh, infiltrate outfits. the team. Right there. Yeah. yeah. Right and there. even Quasar, who was never popular, <laughs> no. uh, that costume would even be gone within a year or two. So. Yeah. We dumped on Quasar in a previous one, but yeah. uh, that's the Avengers Mansion. I guess they is inherited it. This is when they're working from the for the government. They yeah. inherited it from uh, Tony. This is when Tony wasn't doing it. Actually, that's the Did You Know? Mm -hmm. The Avengers oh, is, is the first it. superhero team to... Government clearance! Yeah. Mm. Yep. And they were probably working with Henry Gyrick at the time, that old so-and-so. Ooh, -so. Ooh not What good. a jerk he is. And what else? But yeah, not my favorite team up. That's also, it's partially not as great because the West Coast Avengers had half of the good ones too. That's mm. why Iron Man isn't there, for yeah. example. It, but you know what I do like? The color scheme. It's color everything I like great. about comics right yeah. there. Yeah, it is like a good-looking picture. Yep. It's good art too. 
Not like this. Uh, Whoa, that's a very badly, 90s. It's a Man. badly one full of heads. That is, yeah, <laughs> super, <laughs> very Mark Bagley. X-Men, only four people could fit in that photo booth. <laughs> but <laughs> even there, there, Wolverine got a big stogie. Yeah, <laughs> I was noticing how much beer and cigarettes uh, exist in these, and a swastika if you've seen the entire series. Yeah. yeah, 1990, they didn't care as much, but this is not the best X-Men lineup, and they're, they're just about a year or so away from the blue and gold era, mm, which would damn. revitalize them. But that's what was hurting them at the time, was just like, well, the other, the good X Men are in X Factor, or the, or maybe they're in New Mutants. Like can you, they, can you name all these idiots? Uh, oh let's yeah. See. From left to right, we got Banshee, Storm, Gambit, Forge, Rogue, Big Guy, Strong, no, guy. Strong, guy, strong guy, Strong Guy, Strong Guy, real name Guido, Havoc, yeah. Jubilee, Wolverine, and I believe that is pre Transformation Psylocke or just post Transformation Psylocke. It, but who is who the fuck is Sunder? I'm wondering Sunder. if Sunder is Strong Guy in a different name. Oh, yeah. Or I think Strong Guy was his name when he joined X-Factor. Maybe that's what it was. Uh, but, yeah, that was his power is so interesting that he, if you hit him, he takes that kinetic energy uh, and it gets bigger with it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but did, it's you, a, did you know there? Is that still canonical no, in any way? that seems like a very 90s thing. Due to like, a mystic spell, oh, yeah. the X-Men are undetectable to any kind of electronic equipment. No, that had been undone probably by the time this card was out like <laughs> yeah. that was part of when they moved to australia and they're like there are no more x-men anymore and everybody yeah. thinks they're dead and that was the way they could continue being thought to be dead is mm. the, the magic cast on them that means they couldn't be filmed but this is strange because it's billed as oh their first appearance is x-men number one but mm -hmm. like that team is an x-factor none of the people on this card were an x-men number one no uh so it's it, the closest to that yeah like 30 or something so it, it's a strange in between of it's not that yeah. classic thing and it's also not the jim lee blue and gold era now, so. i did like they had you know the wolverine's not doing it they did have uniform costumes then of like we're all in yellow, yellow. and blue that's our yeah. outfit and wolverine would sometimes wear not like the that. mask free yellow and blue version yeah but uh moving and on wolverine's height correct there yes he's a shorty um, now what and the hell? another X-Men. Now, what the now hell? this is the X-Men era that I was reading a lot of. This yeah. is the giant-sized X-Men, like the cool group that really made X-Men start their ascent to like superstardom. Yeah. With Wolverine, Kitty Pride, Nightcrawler, Colossus, Storm, mm -hmm. and who is who is oh I guess uh, Phoenix. Storm yeah, that was haircut. the Phoenix at the time. Rachel yeah. Ray, who is a Rachel Summers. But sorry, Rachel, Rachel Summers. Ray. <laughs> Rachel Gray. I oh, Rachel she, Gray. I, I heard, Ra say that. I heard anyway, Rachel Ray. <laughs> Rachel Summers is another possible future Jean Gray child who yeah. now she still exists to this day, even though her future has clearly yeah. been retconned. Mm. But yeah, she's working there with uh, with Klops, and that's Aurora when she had her mohawk and no powers. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Colossus still is their bruiser. Right. You got Cud Wagner before mm -hmm. he quits for Excalibur. You got. Kitty Pride in her Shadow Cat outfit, and then a new member, Rogue, and Wolverine is his squat little old self there. He still looks angry and cantankerous, and it's great. Mm -hmm. They were very Plus, into the uh, Lady Mohawks at the time. Yeah. And she in this picture alone. Well, yeah. she had lost Lesbians her Lesbians were huge in the 90s. <laughs> the, the, the Riot Girl movement, I mean, I think that is a good lineup. Yeah. I think yeah. it's a pretty the pretty strong lineup yeah. of X-Men. This really. is like the uncanny era, again, of like you can find the collections of these from after 75 i guess well once one? wolverine got so big the yeah. team got filled with wolverine wannabes yeah. the previous card had gambit on it he was the first of those guys yeah. and the best but mm -hmm. then later they had maggot marrow Excuse jerks me? like those mm -hmm. yeah m-a-g-g-o-t <laughs> maggot that's his name yeah. let's move on no more there's a, there's a lot of x cards in here you'll no know. more mutants <laughs> see why yeah. this is and, uh, barely a team so <laughs> i think they're just trying to really make this team happen yeah. uh, cloak and dagger they are an inseparable duo their powers complement each other and they're I a very a very 80s drug scare america yes. team yeah. uh, what if a white girl and a black man who were runaways were then experimented on with super drugs and then awaken their mutant powers mm. that yeah. is cloak and they're, dagger they're teenagers she's way too developed for a, a movie teenager. about video games with dabney <laughs> coleman <laughs> they yeah. are not no, that cloak seriously and dagger. they are they are teenagers uh, and people were talking, actually, uh, Kate Beaton, one of my favorite cartoonists mm -hmm. online, she did a whole thing about Dagger's boob window, how it must <laughs> <Yeah>. always <laughs> fall open. Like, how do you ever keep it closed? Well, look, it's, right there, there's a clasp right in the middle. Uh, this is clearly a practical costume. Though, I don't know what that person was complaining about. And mm -hmm. then meanwhile, they literally disembody the black man. They're like, you're ahead, and that's it. Like, <laughs> no. You are no. a black void yeah. that people fall into. You are an African American ray man. People, people will be <laughs> more scared to see a white woman with a black man. So let's. <laughs> and yeah, they hid in a church, and they were just kind mm -hmm. of, they, they kind of like a hunchback of Notre Dame quality to them, too. And yeah, 
like her power, she can purge poison and addiction and drugs mm-hmm. and evil and throw from light you. light to daggers. At people. Yeah, and then he can, like, you'll fall into his cloak and there's, like, a pocket dimension that makes you, like, get scared or feel pain or something. I, don't. I know them well because they barely ever had their own comics. They were Spider-Man supporting cast yeah. and guest mm-hmm. stars. So I've seen them in so many things. It's soon after this, they would take a... Uh, well, co-starring role in Maximum Carnage. They were part of the League of Losers helping out Maximum <laughs> yeah. Carnage. What's and then they the... had a good role in The Runaways, and I think this is a team that yeah. would be great for Netflix, to be honest. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. I would um, love them in Netflix. Um, yeah. And more hey, mutants. Hey, but hey, look, hey, look, hey, how, hey, look how, look oh how, God. look mm-hmm. how totally normal ass Cable is right here. Yeah. It's like, yeah, he's got big, pa- big shoulders, but yeah. like he's not insane. And that he, he looks the least stupid. Not like that human embodiment of Miss Pac-Man right there. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's Boom Boom or what was she Boom called? Boom Boom is her name. Yeah, Boom Boom is in here. Let's take a look. Uh, but yeah, uh, she's. So yeah. this is the New Mutants right before X Force. Like yep. X Force would be published within months of this card coming out, mm. and this is when Rob Life was turning them into X-Force and yep. Cable just takes over the book He's he has a very Wolverine quality to him too of just like now nah, I'm here now man it's Cable time I'm your boss I'm in charge I'll be the star of the next book me yep. Cable okay, I'm looking at the did you know here who is Warlock I'm guessing the, the dude the way robot dude in the back idiot. why did I know that he looks like C-3PO got uh, hit with a cartoon bomb <laughs> so he's oh, just yeah. yeah he's a space robot of fiber active yeah fiber optic special organ. power is chimney sweeping <laughs> and then uh, yeah Cable had pretty much no origin at this point and then you've got uh, Wolfsbane there is and the Wolverine furry uh, is he disappearing? Is, what am I? the Wolverine in the group. Uh, what? Wolfsbane? Yeah, oh, no, what is up with this, his his shoulders? She's missing. looking at you from the side. She's a girl. Wow, that's confusing. Okay. She is a furry. And then you got Sunspot, who is uh, revealed to be super rich later on and still hangs out with Ca- Cannonball, who is actually an eternal and mm-hmm. can live forever. And, and the, really, uh, the most interesting thing about this group is that did you know they wrote about the Warlock's head? Yes, yeah. that's true. They yeah, also live in the X Mansion? Hmm. Uh, yeah, at the, the new time. mutants trained in the X Mansion, <laughs> right. but so, in the new mutants wing, do not mix. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Cable literally, um, like he radicalizes them. He says, yeah. "You guys should give me. I got all these guns. Let's be badasses. Leave." This is like this is the most like you are on the cusp of everything you know about the '90s. <laughs> this is like uh-huh. seconds before it happens. <laughs> is that photo, and then the photo, the flash goes off, and then chaos. Yeah. <laughs> Hypercolor everywhere. Yeah. And uh, well, and these these guys are marked for death at this point too. <laughs> so this is X Factor, the original X Men, all on one team, reformed in the '80s when Jean Grey came back to life, and they worked for the government. And when they started, they all had like those X outfits. Yeah. But then it was just at that point, Clops and Jean Grey matching an X there. And mm. I had a Clops toy of that one. I yeah. really like that outfit. I yeah, mean, I had that one in. Uh... But yeah, this is like the team that the original founding X Men then made their own separate team because the X Men team of like Colossus and mm-hmm. Nightcrawler and all them were getting too big. So, but then they needed a new villain, and that led to Apocalypse, and that's why this yeah. original team needed their own Magneto for the eighties. Writer and, Louise Simonson created Apocalypse, who it was the one who transformed Angel into the blue skinned mm-hmm. uh, metal winged archangel. Ar- archangel you see here the walking pair of jams <laughs> I did, and i would say this is a mark bagley one yeah it say. looks very bagley yeah. at least that's better posing like it's unique posing on mm-hmm. each of them yeah the, like yeah it looks more like they are menacing like standing around yeah, a camera do you like the arts yeah the no, arts i know good. people yeah. had a problem now looking back on it that one Cyclops is a total asshole who the second his go- old girlfriend comes back to life he like leaves his wife and child and just like yeah I know I'm married and I said I'd retire but um, you know Jean Grey's back to life and I really would have never married you if not for that but also they work for the government hunting down mutants but in yeah. a friendly way it, it yeah. really doesn't work so well I don't recall their sentient ship I don't remember oh, that. Yeah, I forgot about that. I think it gets blown up. I, I like the little uh, newsy in the bottom corner. <laughs> Gee whiz! Uh, look at the size of that thing. Look at this thing that just wasn't in the city and now it's a gigantic <laughs> building. <laughs> um, oh, we should move on. Yeah, we can move yes. to the next picture here of the team it. photos. Uh, More uh, mutants! Yeah, damn it, all these fucking mutants! I'm sick of them! <laughs> I, I, they ought to be registered. <laughs> so, yeah, this was uh, Chris Claremont he wanted to put his favorite Brits uh, and, uh. and European X-Men in their own comic. So he made up the team Excalibur based in Merry Old England mm-hmm. out of Captain Britain's place. So Captain Britain was not part of it for long. <laughs> 
Captain Britain was one of the first books uh, Chris Claremont wrote. And so when Nightcrawler left the team and Shadowcat, he kind of put them with a bunch of other weirdos he wasn't a big fan of. Uh, including uh, mm-hmm. yeah, Mo- Morgan. I forget. Megan. Megan. I yeah, I forget Megan. all about her. Megan. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Can you have a superhero? Yeah, they they, they then go have a lot Debbie. of. They have go uh, a lot of more fantastical adventures yeah. as X Men got more like conspiracy slash future <laughs> slash virus retro virus <laughs> yes. and science fiction-y this was meant to be more like fantasy is, and weird is, did you know is literally all my mother thinks about all comics <laughs> <laughs> Albert travels from dimension to dimension in a railway train powered by a giant dragon yep. I'm surprised Lockheed isn't in this I thought he was a member he was heavily in a uh, part of X to American so two things yeah. about the the image First of all, is I'm guessing that's Megan wearing her boyfriend's button-up shirt. Actually, that's Rachel Summers, who we uh. talked about two cards ago. That yeah. this, this is when she was occupied with the Phoenix Force. Megan is uh. the blonde. Okay. Well, then I'm guessing Phoenix is the one who has eyes coming out of her boobs that are looking down at the word Excalibur. Yes. Do you guys see yeah. that, too? That's, that's nice. I mean, that's how light reflects. Come on. <laughs> that, is, like that, that is strange. That is weird. Mm. I think that's weird posing on Crawler because Kurt Wagner is normally, like, bent over and, like, yeah. ooh. But this he, time he's like, ooh, stand up straight. Yeah, he usually doesn't the have a perfect bowl. posture. <laughs> Huh. It looks it looks like he's got some stomach problems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is a team I did not follow I at all. No, me either. I tried. The video. <laughs> um, all next right. one, yep. bam. Uh, uh. Again, barely a team. Three people. The Brotherhood of Evil Mutants was not where they normally would be, and I think by this point they even stopped saying like, "Why are we proclaiming we're evil? We're the Brotherhood <laughs> of Mutants." Like, yep. yeah, you wouldn't put it on our. It's hard to get into all the good nightclubs when you're calling yeah. yourself evil, but it's. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, I, I think normal. That was then, quite a time for Scarlet Witch's costume. Yeah, I mean, she looks more witch-like, I suppose. Well, this was but, when she went crazy and evil. After hmm. her children were revealed to be created by as puppets of Mephisto, <laughs> and then she went crazy, and then her uh, husband got destroyed, and Vision didn't even remember her. Then she lost her mind and attacked both the X-Men and the Avengers, and the X-Men versus Avengers stuff, which was a card way, way back. Yeah, in our famous battles. And this was when she befriended her old daddy, uh, Magneto and teamed up with them and then Quicksilver just kind of came along for the ride to watch his sister not he didn't uh. care much for Quick uh, for Magneto mm. it was newly revealed that they were her his kids at the mm. time but which, part of the brotherhood yeah. yeah well they were original brotherhood of evil mutants members who mm. once they were beaten they Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver immediately joined the Avengers mm. like they you, it was clear Stan Lee enjoyed them on in X Men, and he was like, "Let's put these ones in the Avengers. These are the A level dudes." And uh, but yeah, good old Asteroid M. I love Asteroid M. Yeah. It's, it's such a great, <laughs> stupid place. Like, why would you be in an asteroid? <laughs> I guess it's remote. No but, good can come of yeah. that. And yeah, I think Scarlet Witch would be back to normal relatively it's, soon. It's I know I can't think of a lot of other teams that were around in this period, but it is so mutant heavy. Yeah, yeah, uh, so yeah far. it's because they they were so they. Had, Blown up in the 80s, and now there were so too. many, and they had to have a bunch of books so to put them in. At this point, they've run out of background ideas. Eh, yeah. TV static. Yeah, static. TV static. I, <laughs> and I will, I, I also think that uh, Eric Lyncher has been uh, doping here. Yeah. He's like getting way too big. And uh, though, at this point, now it's been revealed they aren't his children. They aren't so that kids. did you know is wrong? Oh, really? Because yeah. they can be inhumans now. They're inhumans, so they're not mutants, so Fox can't own them. <laughs> God damn it. Fine. Uh, hey. now, this is a Mark Bagley one again, but Brett and I knew that the, fin- the Sinister yeah. Six were on the rise at this point. Mm-hmm. This is uh, how I kind of got into comics in a sense was ninety ninety one and Return of the Sinister Six was an amazing Spider-Man uh, storyline in the 330s. Mm-hmm. I think 336 maybe around there. Um, but their first appearance, like I think Craven was there instead of Hobgoblin. He was dead by this but point. But he had been yeah. ki- he killed himself by this point. So now mm-hmm. Hobgoblin has kind of come in to be part of the Sinister Six, led by Dr. Octopus. But each issue kind of like brought another one in to like reintroduce a new generation to Mysterio, Sandman, Vulture, and Electro. I need um, that Mysterio head to be 9,000 times bigger. <laughs> <laughs> a little too small, but I, I did like this era of business suit Doc Ock. He's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. I'm not a fat guy in a green in a green jumpsuit. I'm a businessman with very, giant uh, arms. Very 80s cokey Miami guy. Uh, uh, though the next time they would get together in the Revenge of the oh Sinister boy. Six, 
uh, which is a ridiculous comic. It's basically Eric Larson fan service. But yeah. when they would get back together, Sandman turned it down, and he was then turned into glass and mm. yeah. frozen. I can't like, believe that the uh, Vulture's never been in any Spider-Man movie, especially since he could totally be played by Abe Vigoda. Uh, <laughs> could have. The rumor <laughs> is that he will be play. He will be in the next movie. Yeah. He will yeah. be. The, he was meant to be in the third Spider-Man film and then the fourth Spider-Man we film by Sam Raimi <laughs> and would have been played they originally wanted Sir Ben Kingsley they did the they have a, there's a bunch of storyboards they just released wow. for the unmade Spider-Man 4 I forgot they had that stupid underwater base that also seems <laughs> yeah, dumb but Doc Ock loves underwater bases that, that, it fits with his motif of uh, being water a Sandman yeah. to mud did man. you know confuses the shit out of me yeah this is an interesting one that they were the first group of villains that teamed up to stop one hero yeah because yeah, I think I, I mean that assuming that that's totally Totally true. I'm taking their word but for just it. Just the way it's written, did they defeat? Did did they defeat a superhero? No, well, or they did. Were they were created by supervillains? It's an alliance. They didn't. F- so they were formed villain. with the purpose in mind to defeat a villain. Doesn't mean you they were successful. The, yeah, they see the first appearance there, Amazing Spider-Man Annual One. It's an amazing comic of just. Mm-hmm. It's a splash page for every villain. Like, the Mm -hmm. idea is just, this is to show off every villain. Spider-Man fights each of them for three pages, and then it ends with him punching them out in a giant, big old, like, pin-up-sized splash splash page. It's amazing. (laughs) And I think they were the first one. Pretty soon after this, Sandman would join up with the Trapster, uh, Wizard, and I forget the third, the fourth member of the Frightful Four. Yeah, he'd be on that team, which I thought it was lame. They're like, no, Sam, man, you're a Spider-Man villain. You're yeah. not a Fantastic Four. But villain. just also the idea that like this uh, in 1964, and even when he came back in the 80s to do the Sinister Six again, the return of the Sinister Six, almost 30 years later or whatever. Uh, the idea is like. Only Spider-Man had a, ro- a rogues gallery mm. to say, so that to speak. That rich within two years. Yeah. Hmm. Like, you couldn't have an Iron Man equivalent or an Avengers equivalent. Like, only Spider-Man had these great villains uh, to do this with. Speaking Again, of mutants. back to these fucking mutants, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, this... So you got Kevin Bacon there. Yes. Yeah. Sebastian, Sebastian Shaw, Shaw on the left. Emma uh, Frost, White Queen. And which Black I, Queen is, is this? I can't recall which Black Queen this yeah. is. Like, she's... They have a revolving door of Black Queens because they wanted Jean Grey to be the Black Queen yeah. because there's always... I mean, this was also when Magneto just shoved himself in, like, I'm also in charge of the Hellfire yeah. Club. How many clubs can you be in, man? Yeah. <laughs> like, what if they both have to go to a thing? Yeah. It's like well, your high school friends and college friends. And, and by the way, look room. at look at the ladies there. That is such the, like, Ooh, swimsuit I'm model old. thing of yeah. the time. Just, yeah. like, very high underpants. It's gross. <laughs> just get it higher. Like, people want to see those hip bones, <laughs> man. <laughs> Want to see him. But yeah, they were there. They were like, what? Trying to like work behind the scenes to manipulate to get Jean Grey to turn into the Phoenix. And mm-hmm. then with that, they would like. Well, they're, they're a decades old, like social. The, yeah. Uh, sorry, centuries old social club. They were, you know, this English group of uh, mutants who were like, oh, we're the best. We're mutants. We're going to just be controlling things from behind the scenes. And we're basically like, you know, the uh, the Elks Lodge or whatever, but a much more sinister. And they wanted a new fourth member. There's always four members members of the hellfire club Mm -hmm. they wanted jean gray to join because she was so powerful uh but then she ended up being too strong for them but they kicked the four of them which was not this exact lineup they kicked the ass of the x-men all the x-men my favorite one is like sebastian shaw just says no anything you hit me with i just throw it back at you like nothing can do anything to me (laughs) i believe the way the beast beats him is he's just like oh but i can keep twirling you on my feet forever like you'll just never have You'll never be on the ground to fight back. So I think that's Celine. Oh who, yeah, Celine. Yeah, yeah. Who shows up in New Mutants number or number nine? Yeah, but, like, she, I don't really know her deal. Not but much happened with her. She did not stick around. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, and I think Magneto again just kind of forced his way into the team. Yeah, but another big like '80s and into the early '90s again, Kevin, thing for the X-Men, and they were in the cartoon. Yeah, like Kevin Bacon Mullet. played Sebastian Shaw in X-Men First Class. January, January Jones. Jones. Yeah, and January oh, Jones murdered in Days of Future Past hmm. off screen. Yeah, but uh, off screen. <laughs> <laughs> and wrapping it up sure. uh, more uh, fucking mm. mutants the honorable mutants. mention at the very end is Alpha Flight mm. uh, which oh, is Alpha the Alpha Flight team sucks like this one the worst ones yeah no puck even is there, there's like... no puck there's no North Star there's no um, his sister Bright Light I forget her name but like there's they're not even on this team. It's, oh, it's terrible. I love these names. Talisman, yeah. Vindicator, Windshear, Sasquatch, Persuasion, Ooh, and Box. Box. Yeah, I think Box, Box is, is the, the robot. Ro- Box yeah. is the robot. Sasquatch is obvious, and Vindicator is the woman. She's the leader of the team. 
And then Which the rest woman? are your guests. With the, with the ski goggles on? Sure. Yeah, well, she was invented. The Vindicator outfit, she's the second Vindicator. Her husband was yeah. the original one and died. But as you can tell, her outfit is the Canadian flag. Yeah. They mm. are the team mm. of Canada, created by John Byrne, who could not have been hotter in the mid-'80s, could do whatever he wanted at Marvel. Yeah. He, he was the one who worked really hard to make Wolverine a standout X-Men mm. because he was a fellow Canadian. Yeah. And so then when he could make any comic he wanted, he's like... Canada needs a team. Ugh, and so uh. in his original version, he's like, well, Canada is about, you know, the British, but he also has French Canadians in there. He's got a Sasquatch. He's got an, he had an indigenous person mm -hmm. on the team too. Like that was the super alpha flight team. But when he, when Byrne left the book, worse writers got involved in it and they kind of did they turned it into this like ridiculous version of the also team worst uh, headquarters ever yeah. sub basement under parliament building <laughs> in ottawa, ottawa canada <laughs> Uh, yeah, and they're famous, I guess, for not this lineup, but uh, Wolverine being used by Alpha Flight, yeah. as we talked yeah. about prior. Like, that's a, did you know right there? Yeah. Did you know the Wolverine is not a member of Alpha Flight? Yes, nice. uh, but the card says Wolverine Kids. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, it, but I did love. They became a term in comics uh, in the last decade of. They got alpha flighted, which mm. means you get beat by in like <coughs> easily by a new dude who's just like, oh, th that was alpha flight's job of this new villain is so tough. He beat all the alpha flight without yeah. even trying. And alpha flight's usually like the team of expendable people who say, hey, we heard a disturbance over there. Probably nothing. Let's check it out. Oh, my God, this ancient evil appeared. We're all dead. Bro. <laughs> Hundreds of square miles of empty Canadian wilderness. <laughs> Though now Alpha Flight yeah. is the name of the Wakandan back space program yep. that is led by Captain Marvel. Puck and Sasquatch are on that team. Yep. Uh, and uh, the shaman as well. Yeah. Mm. But that wraps up our look at team pictures. Uh, we've only got one piece really left for this and mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we're going to have to troubleshoot how we're going to handle it, but uh, yeah. it should be fun. But for the most part, that is the conclusion of this yeah. card set. So uh, if this was somehow your first, please go back and look through at the backlog. This is like how, and everything that we just talked about, a lot of it we learned from these cards. Yeah. Uh, and if you guys like this, uh, share it with folks, and maybe we'll. There's plenty series of cards after oh this boy, that we could do. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be back with one more. <laughs>